Hey everyone, Khalid here. Welcome back to Clinical Physio. In today's video, we're gonna take you through the key muscles that adduct the hip joint. If you like learning anatomy from us, if you want more anatomy videos, please be sure to smash that like button. And otherwise, let's dive in with today's video. So the key little memory aid or phrase that we can use to remember the muscles that adduct the hip is the phrase three ducks pecking grass. Once again, three ducks pecking grass. The three ducks in this situation are adductor magnus, adductor longus, and adductor brevis. Pecking stands for pectineus, and grass stands for gracilis. So there we are, the three ducks pecking grass, a really simple way of remembering what those are. Let's go through them one by one, starting with the three ducks pecking grass. First of all, we have adductor magnus. It's a huge muscle, as the term magnus would suggest. And this muscle is actually suggested to be separated into two different parts. Effectively, what is an origin part with two different origins and with two different insertions. So as we can see, it's a, it's a huge muscle and it almost represents a little bit of a triangle shape if you think about the fact that it has a really wide base across the femur going towards this angled point around the pubic bone. So we can see that it covers the medial and the posterior parts of the thigh. And the two different parts are sometimes separated into the adductor part and the ischio congular part. So these two different parts have different origins, different insertions, and different nerve supplies as well. So the origin, the origins for both are on the pelvis. We can see that the adductor part originates from the inferior pubic rami, and also the ischial ramus. There we can see that those origin points there. And if we rotate posteriorly, we can see that the ischiocondylar part originates from the ischial tuberosity. Naturally, ischiocondylar helps us remember ischial tuberosity as the origin there. Then we can see that the insertion points for both of these different parts are on the femur. It's a huge big muscle, as we mentioned. So the adductor part inserts into the gluteal tuberosity on the posterior aspect of the femur as well as the medial lip of the linea aspera. Linea aspera translates in, raf, in Latin as rough line, which runs down the posterior femur. And we can also see how it inserts into the medial supracondylar line of the femur. And here we can see those different insertion points really nicely. The ischiocondylar part inserts into the adductor tubercle, which is on the very distal and medial aspect of the femur, as we can see just here. And actually, if we look at it from this view, we can see that there's a little bit of a separation between these insertions and this insertion on the adductor tubercle. So let's talk about the function of this really important muscle. Naturally, we know it's going to be an adductor of the hip and it's going to be a very strong adductor of the hip. However, it is also suggested to have a number of secondary roles, including hip flexion, hip internal rotation. In some guises, it sometimes is mentioned as something that assists with external rotation, but the other main role that it's thought to have is as a extensor of the hip joint. Now, the four main hip extensors are gluteus maximus and the three hamstring muscles, semimembranosus, semitendinosus, and biceps femoris. However, sometimes you'll hear of adductor magnus being referred to as the fourth hamstring muscle because it actually follows a very similar path to the other hamstring muscles with insertion, with origin points around the inferior aspect of the pelvis, including the ischial tuberosity, and how it then runs down the posterior aspect of the femur to insert into those regions too. So do remember that it has a really important role in hip extension, as well as its main role, hip adduction. So the other adductor muscles are a little bit more simple. Let's start with 
adductor longus. So we can see that adductor longus originates from the anterior body of the pubis. And then it runs down the medial aspect of the thigh in order to insert into the linear aspera of the femur on its medial lip, like we saw with the adductor magnus. The next muscle we then have is adductor brevis. Brevis, highlighting that this is a much smaller muscle, as we can see here. Its origin point, like the adductor longus, is from the anterior body of the pubis, but it also has an additional origin point on the inferior pubic ramus as well. We can see it therefore has a small running when it inserts into, like the adductor longus, into the linear aspera of the femur, but as you can see, much higher up, pertaining to the fact that it is a much shorter muscle. So if we think about adductor longus and adductor brevis, these two muscles are pure adductors of the hip. And one of the key clues there is how their insertion points are only on the femur. We can see that both of them insert into the linear aspera towards the posterior aspect of the femur and of course medially. But when you compare them to some of the other muscles we'll look at later, particularly gracilis, you'll notice the difference in those insertion points means a difference in their role as well. So those are the three little ducks. The pecking muscle is pectineus. We can also see that compared to the other muscles, this is also a little bit smaller in its length. It's a relatively flat muscle, and we can see that it is located around the medial aspect of the thigh. So the origin of this muscle comes from the superior pubic ramus, particularly at the pectineal line, as you can imagine from pectineus. And then its insertion point, like some of the other muscles, is onto the linear aspera of the posterior aspect of the femur. But it also has an insertion into the pectineal line of the femur, which we can see on this medial aspect of the femur here. So as we said, pectineus also has a role in hip adduction. And adduction is... is quite clearly its main role. However, it's suggested to have additional roles as a weak hip flexor and a weak internal rotator, as well as being a muscle that crucially tries to stabilize the pelvis. And so the final muscle that we're gonna look at in this group is the gracilis muscle. Now, one thing we notice straight away is its insertion point because its insertion point is not onto the femur more on that in a second. But we can see that this is a, a longer and perhaps a little bit of a thinner muscle that runs down the medial thigh. Its origin point, like some of the other muscles, is said to originate from the anterior body of the pubis, as well as the inferior pubic ramus and the ischial ramus as well. So its insertion point, it runs down the medial surface of the proximal tibia and then it inserts into the pizanserine region at the proximal medial tibia. There are a couple of other muscles that insert into here, including sartorius and semitendinotis. But the key thing about this is the fact that because it inserts into this region on the medial aspect of the tibia, is that not only does it have a role in adduction of the hip, but it also has a secondary role in flexion of the knee. We can see that because it inserts below the knee joint, it therefore highlights to us that it has a secondary role at the knee as well. So those are your hip adductors. Once again, the easiest way to remember these is with that little phrase, three ducks pecking grass. So be sure to remember that when you're thinking of your hip adductors. So everyone, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please support us by smashing that like button. It's the number one way you can help our channel. If you want more from us, be sure to check out our Instagram account at Clinical Physio. And if you like following on TikTok as well, we also have a TikTok account at clinical.physio if you want to follow us there. Now, if you want more on anatomy, as a part of our membership platform, link in the description below, member.clinicalphysio.com, we have the anatomy 
boot camps. If you're a clinical physio premium or annual member, you'll get access to our hip anatomy boot camp, shoulder anatomy boot camp, knee anatomy boot camp, foot and ankle anatomy boot camp, wrist and hand anatomy boot camp, elbow anatomy boot camp. The list goes on. For all your anatomy learning, join us there on premium or annual membership. Once again, really grateful to have you with us. My name's Khalid. Look forward to seeing you soon here on Clinical Physio.